Let's look at another example. Uh, this time we've got a trig function involved, right? So we've got cosine of x squared. Our interval is from minus 2 to 2. We're going to apply the same strategy that we applied um, to the previous examples. So we start by looking for critical numbers. Chain rule tells us that the derivative, we take the derivative of the outside. So the derivative of cosine is minus sine x squared times the derivative of x squared. And that leaves us with minus 2x sine of x squared. Okay. So where is this thing going to be equal to 0? So f prime of x is going to be equal to 0 if, well, certainly if x equals 0, that actually works in both parts. Um, where else between minus 2 and 2 um, could we have a 0? Well, we could have x squared equal to some multiple of pi, right? So k being plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, and so on. All right. Now, um, if we went with uh, plus or minus 2, so if it's plus or minus 2 pi, we see that we're going to be a bit big, right? So, so 2 times pi is a bit bigger than 6, and, and so the square root is, is certainly going to be bigger than 2, right? Um, because 2 squared is 4, which is smaller than 6. <coughs> So that tells me that I really only have to look at plus or minus 1. All the other ones are going to be outside the domain. So that means, and I guess really, if we're doing squares, uh -huh. we don't put the negative in there. But when we take the square root, we do get plus or minus square root of pi. Okay. So we have three critical numbers in our domain. And we compute the values, right? So f of 0 is going to be cos of 0. It's going to be 1. f at either plus or minus root pi is going to be cos of pi, right? Because if we square it, we just get pi when we square the square root of pi. And cosine of pi is minus 1. Okay. Well, we also have the endpoints to consider. Right? And by the way, our function here is even, right? Um, whether it's minus 2 or plus 2, when we plug it in, it's going to get squared. Right? We're going we're gonna to get our result. Um, now, how do, we, how do we figure that one out? What do we do with it? Uh, well, one option is you can plug it into your calculator, and you're going to get uh, well, around negative 0 0.65. Okay? I looked that one up in the textbook. All right, textbook gives the value. Okay, so suppose that you don't have the textbook handy, you don't have the calculator handy, someone hands you this question, you're like, come on, come on. Cosine of 4, what am I supposed to do with cosine of 4? That's not like even on the unit circle, right? It's not one of the special values. Um, well, what can you say about 4? Well, we can, we can at least do this, right? We can say, hey, here's our unit circle. We know that that angle is pi. We know that pi is 3 and a bit, right? 3.14. Um, we could work out what's 3 pi over 2 if you want, right? What's, what is 3 pi over 2? So uh, 3 pi is going to be 9 something divided by 2, so 4.5, 4.6, somewhere in there, right? So an angle of 4, 4 radians, it's somewhere in the third quadrant, okay? So we know that cosine is negative in the third quadrant, so we at least have that going for us, right, the minus sign. Um, but in fact, we don't, we don't actually need to know the numerical value, right? We know it's going to be some negative number. And we know it has to be between minus 1 and 1, because that's the range for the cosine function. So we already know that this has to be the maximum. This has to be the minimum, right? It, this number cannot be bigger than 1 or smaller than minus 1, because 
it would be outside the range of the cosine function. So it's nice to know the value, but you don't actually need to know the value to solve the problem, right? We can say that the absolute max is going to be f of 0, which is 1, and the absolute min is f at root pi, which is the same as the value you get at f at minus root pi, and at those points, you get minus 1. Okay. So we've solved the problem. 